Hi, my name is Tony Parker and welcome to another tutorial from Worship Media Pro. Today I'm going to talk about looping particles. It's a pretty popular method, pretty popular effect, and in motion backgrounds, well, you need everything to loop. Cool thing about particles is you can get extremely creative. You can create fire, you can create snow, you can create rain, clouds, fog, uh, sparkles, glitter, sprinkles, you know, you name it, you can do that inside of particles. And, uh, and you can create a couple of comps and loop those comps and then just apply them to pretty much every motion graphic uh, loop that you're going to create. And, uh, and again, just uh, it's endless, the possibilities here. Now, the two different particle systems that you could use is one that is free. It's part of After Effects, which is CC Particle World. That's a great effect, a great particle generator. Another one is from Red Giant, Trap Code Particular. And I have uh, the latest one, uh, what is that, Particular 2.0. I seem to use Particular 99% of the time. Although CC Particle World is awesome. Um, in fact, I use that one for creating like a fire effect or a twirly, kind of like a glitter, rising glitter or a, or magic dust kind of thing. Um, I'll use CC Particle World because it's really quick to do that. Um, now what I'm going to do for this example is I'm going to loop what looks like a flame. And, uh, and of course you can apply all kinds of blurs and other effects to make it even cooler. But we're going to keep it real simple uh, to move right along and, uh, and get to the point. So let's go ahead and do that. I have a, a blank slate here and I'm going to create my comp and I'll just call it Particles. For the comp, I'm going to leave it as, as uh, my kind of my default settings here, 720p. Uh, I'm going to do the 30 frames a second square pixels, and I'm going to do 40 seconds. So 40 seconds will give me 24 seconds of loop, which is great. I like to keep things at about 24 seconds, unless there's not much excitement in the motion background. I'll try to keep it at 10. So let's uh, let's keep this at 24 seconds for this entire setup here. And now I'm going to let me move this up and we'll keep it at 100%. And I'm going to right click on this uh, blank space here and I'm going to add a solid. And then I'm going to make the solid the comp size and I'm just going to call it uh, particles one. It's going to be my first particles. And I'll keep the color black. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag over CC Particle World. I'll use just the default one that comes with After Effects so that it's free for the tutorial. And uh, you notice here it puts in a lot of other extra junk and it really doesn't allow for you to be creative. So let's go ahead and remove all that. I just clicked under uh, Grid and Guides and we're just going to remove every single possible grid and guide that we pop possibly can. There you go. It just allows for you to be more creative. It gives you a kind of a blank canvas. Now the one that uh, is by default is actually pretty ugly. So we're going we're gonna to make it cooler. Now I'm going to um, twirl down Producer and Physics and Particles. That's where I'm going to spend my time. And instead of a explosion under physics, I'm going to select fire. And then in, uh, instead of lines, which is that's kind of actually cool, I'm going to make it faded spheres. OK, now let's start messing around with some things to to make this a little bit more dense and to make it simulate fire, because right now if I hit the space bar, it doesn't really look like fire. So let's try to make this look a little bit more like fire. And again, keep in mind that this is just a very rough uh, example of how to utilize this and, and uh, have fun with it. We'll put this at point one for extra. Um, I tend to think that that's actually pretty cool. Now I can add some blur to this. I can add some vector blur. I can add some Gaussian blur. You know, I could start to make this thing look really like fire, um, but you know, some distortion, things like that. But we'll go ahead and just leave it like this for the example. Now you notice in the beginning, it starts and then um, starts to basically have a, a birth rate that creates more and more particles. Well, uh, of course, if we had it start over or start from the beginning, uh, that would be a problem for loops, right? Because it would always loop to blank and then build from there. So we need to fix that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to 16 seconds 
because we know for sure at 16 seconds I have all my particles created. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going over here in the uh, left hand side and I'm underneath my, uh, my comp particles and I'm just going to type in 16 colon. That is actually 16 seconds. So 16 colon, it jumps my timeline right to 16. Now I'm going to click on the solid. I'm going to do shift 8 on my Mac and I'm going to do control 8 on my Mac. What it did is right here it created a marker on the timeline, created a marker on the solid, on the layer. So that's exactly what I wanted to do. Now I'm going to click on particles and I'm going to duplicate it. So when I duplicate it, let's try to keep ourselves organized. I'm going to change the name. All I did was click on it, hit enter. It allowed for me to jump in and change the name of this duplicate layer. Now I'm still going to spend some time here on my top layer, so I'm going to click back on my top layer and I'm going to move this marker right here all the way to the end of my timeline. I'm not going to go one frame past the timeline like we traditionally do with things like fractal noise. I'm just going to go to the end of my timeline. So what I did is I, I bumped up, I zoomed in on this timeline so that I make sure I bump it right up against uh, the end. And I'm sure there's some great creative uh, shortcut for that. If anybody knows, please post it in the comments because I just haven't had time to look it up. Too lazy that way, I guess. So I'm done, I've moved that marker all the way to the end, not a frame pass like we traditionally do. And uh, my, my um, timeline still is right on my markers. We'll just leave it like that for now. Now I still have my solid highlighted. I'm gonna hit I, the I key takes me to the beginning of my top layer, which is great. Now I'm going to select my second layer, the one that I duplicated. I'm going to go up to my birth rate. I'm going to start my clock and then I'm going to go one frame. So one frame in, um, in Mac is the command key and right arrow. So that just put me one frame. You saw it just a little glitch there. It just bumped one frame up. Now I'm going to take it from two and I'm going to put it to zero. So what I'm doing is I'm making the particles die off. All right, so now I am essentially starting to do a little overlap here to maintain a seamless loop for particle creation. Next thing I do is I take my, my uh, composition time and I drag this up to my markers. And again, I want to zoom in because I want to make sure that I'm going to be right up against that marker. Whoops. And let's see, where is that at? There it is. So obviously I didn't get there yet. And it was, looks like it was just one more frame away. And I'll just go ahead and zoom this back out again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim this comp to my, uh, to my work area. So I'm going to trim comp to work area. And now we're going to go ahead and uh, run this through. Um, I'm going to do a RAM preview and see what we get. And a RAM preview, by the way, on a uh, Mac is going to be Control Zero. So we'll let this uh, do a RAM preview because I don't have any patience. You notice that it just did a nice seamless loop. Okay, now let's 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 mess around with this since we're done. So that was actually a pretty straightforward thing, right? Let's do a oh, a directional blur. Uh, where's that at? Directional blur. So I'm going to drag this. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that because it'll make it confusing. I'm going to right click on my gray area here and I'm going to do an adjustment layer and, uh, and I'm sure I'm um, doing this demo for or tutorial for a lot of folks that are already playing in uh, After Effects but an uh, adjustment layer basically will apply to all the layers below it. So I'm going to call this my blur just to kind of keep myself organized and I'm going to drag this effect to my blur and then I'm going to do my blur length um, we'll uh, we'll apply some kind of cool little blur, you know. Maybe I'll maybe I'll move it a little bit to kind of simulate. There we go. So you notice I'm starting to create a little simulation here of fire. Now what I can do is I can take maybe my vector blur, and oops, I'll just drag it on there, and I'll bump that to three maybe. Uh, maybe I'll bump it to five and you start to see that I'm creating fire. Isn't that pretty cool? <laughs> so maybe you can make this the burning bush or something like that, but you get the idea. You can start to get really creative just with, with that basic um, uh, looping particle. So anyways, hope that was very helpful. What I'll do is I will create a link 
for uh, for this particular After Effects file so that you can pull it up and you know see see what I created there and uh, and keep it for your own reference. So hopefully that was helpful. Have a wonderful day.